This is the story on how we three, Caro, Niels and I, ended up in Cairo together, waiting at the Sudanese embassy to get our visa for our trip towards Central Africa. Back in Istanbul, I met Niels in a bicycle shop and found out that he is also on the same route as I am. <laughs> and Caro, also wanting to cycle to Africa, took a plane to Istanbul to join. As we were cycling towards the beautiful southern Turkey, we were desperately looking for a solution on how to get to Africa without flying. Luckily, I managed to find Hendrik, a Swedish sailor, on his way to the Red Sea in a Facebook group for Mediterranean sailors. I asked Niels if he wanted to join and he was happy to do so as his alternative would have been to fly. Well, hello there. As you can see, it's boat time now. <laughs> Uh, we made it to Finnecke and we are we had a one night already here in the harbor on the boat and today will be the last day to do preparations and tomorrow we will sail uh, towards Egypt and yeah there's a few jobs to be done so let's get to work Help I can. all right How on earth do we transport three non-folding bicycles on a sailing boat? Hey Simon, what do you do? This is the charging port for the laptop, yeah. for the navigation laptop, and uh, it's not getting enough. It's not charging, so I'm trying to solve it somehow. <laughs> I can put my background into work, at least. This is the step to the kitchen, so super important. <laughs> Otherwise you start to death. So it's not good. No. So yeah, we ended up on a big sailboat known as a Catch, a beautiful Nauticat 43 from the year 1984, sailing under a Swedish flag. We are ready for takeoff. And it looks like we, it's going to be very windy on the second leg of the trip. We will go to the island of Cyprus first and then from there on do the hop across the longer distance uh, towards Egypt. Bye bye Turkey! So on a foggy calm evening in the beginning of January we set sail to Egypt. So it's the first day we are on the go since 24 hours 
and the waves are quite strong because the wind is quite strong and I'm not feeling too good we were outside most of the day there you can see the horizon and it's quite good don't get stomach sick so easily but yeah I'm trying to get some sleep and we I'm almost falling out of the bed when we wake we spend the next two days hiding from the wind just in front of the Greek side of Cyprus resting and waiting for the winds to calm down a good time to fix a few things on deck and relax without the waves rocking the boat We also needed water and diesel to make it across to Egypt. Luckily, we could get it without officially checking into Greece. So technically we are not allowed to go on land, but getting those two things is allowed. Good deal! As we were leaving the island, we also left the protected bay we anchored in for two nights. The wind got stronger and stronger, coming almost straight at us. We had no choice but to keep pushing south, sometimes even using the engine. It's time to re to reef the main sail now. You can't fall off the boat. Doesn't look so calm anymore, does it? That will be a good night. Like this. Lee shore means that, I mean, the wind comes from this is a windward side and this is the leeward side. That shore on the leeward side. We always have to be a little bit careful and hold out a little bit more because obviously we don't want to be washed up on the leeward shore. Yes. I'm on watch right now and my job is to look out for boats and see if our boat is on course. I have devices, obviously I'm not steering the boat, so the autopilot is taking care of keeping the boat on track. This is the radar uh, that shows me if there are any boats around. But you can take action to adjust the course. It's around. 4 o'clock in the morning and 
we are going to be in Egypt around noon. So yeah. With the wind coming a bit more from the west, we were sailing again. That also meant that Niels, who was seasick as soon as it got rough again, had to put his feet up against the kitchen to prevent him falling out of the bed. Poor guy. Uh, this is sailing at 25 knots. It's a bit of a tilt. Walking around the boat isn't too easy at the moment. Still around uh, 230 k's to go. In order to get into the marina of Port Said, a pilot needs to take over the boat and place it into the harbor. Okay, back to channel 12 and cool Port Said control and tell them we are at 35. Suddenly, after a rough week on the boat, we arrived in a different world with some bad news. We can't get off the boat here. We need to sail another week south. There are no COVID testing facilities in Port Said, therefore we must go south through the Suez Canal into the Red Sea for $400 per person, not including the cost of the boat. Egypt, I, I knew already Egypt is going to be difficult, but yeah, it feels a bit like a rip-off to be honest. <laughs> Somebody's excited to go to Suez Canal.
it's a bit of a strange situation we are in right now because we are in transit. It means we can walk around here in Egypt, but officially we are not in Egypt, we are just in transit. And tonight this is our transit harbor and tomorrow we will keep on going the Suez Canal to Suez. And then we are still in transit and then we will go to Huagada to check in. He was up the whole time, right? Good morning. How do you feel? Rested. <laughs> wow. Good morning. More coffee or yeah, nice coffee. Just cheese. Wow, we made it into the Red Sea. Here, the wind was coming from the north, meaning that we were sailing downwind as we continued south on the left arm of the northern Red Sea. The boat rocks less and the apparent wind on deck is almost gone. Overall, a way more relaxed sailing experience. Time to play around and set the spinnaker. That didn't go as planned. Finally, we made it to Huagada. But we still can't go on land. Time to get the COVID test. We need to get our visas and our corona tests first. How many people do you need to test? Six. six. Test bags from the hotel. From the Four, hotel. five, six, seven. You mean seven. I'm the seven. After two weeks on the boat, we just wanted to get off. But we needed to wait and wait and wait for the Egyptian <laughs> authorities to give us our passports back. Oh, what's happening? Nothing, that's a problem. <laughs> and Caro feels like it's staying a long time on the boat. <laughs> she feels like staying on the boat is a good idea. <laughs> nice. Three o'clock they let us go and now it's time to unload the bicycles, they're so salty. Poof. Finally we can get off the boat. We made it to Africa. What an intense journey it has been. Thank you both Hendrix for taking us along. Now let's clean up. up and move on.